Hey, welcome to Spinner Rack. And new show right over here. I'm helming it by myself because, well, what can you say? Things happen. Well, we just finished up with NYCC and I did get a few requests to myself since I still buy, sell, trade comics, all of that other sort of thing. You know, what's the best route about going it? How do we get it done? Best value for the money? Best trade deal? So we're going to be coming out with a couple of shows, well, maybe two or three, rather than maybe three or four rather than just a couple, in order to give some tips and some pointers. Behind me, you'll probably see this really nice looking image of Wonder Woman on a gold foil cover. Now this was an exclusive at the New York City Comic Con. A lot of people are after it now, and I just saw one sell on eBay for about $810. You can only shake your head when you see this type of stuff. And so the tips, you know, are really try to help people buy, sell, and trade effectively. At the end of the day, we're all collectors. Everybody has that grail that they want. And then, of course, they're the people who are buying because they want to sell it a little bit later. And then, who knows, you may have a whole bunch of doubles of comics, you want to trade them later on in order to improve your collection. The idea of the show and the shows that are coming is so that you maximize what skills that you have and get the best value for your money, the best value for your collection, and then try to actually put something together that at the end of the day you can sit back, lean, and say, you know what, job well done. Now, I'm not going to be dealing with anything like how do you go about getting Action Comics 1, because there's only one way that you get Action Comics 1, is that if you need to have a lot of money. If you're not rolling with 10, if you're not rolling with 15 million, don't even forget about it. You're not getting it, okay? You might get a lower grade copy, and even then, don't pay your mortgage for the better part of the year, if that. But first thing I did want to go with was the image that I just showed. Let's get another good look at her, okay? Nice looking picture, right? On a gold cover. This comic was only given out if you attended the Wonder Woman panel at NYCC. So those lucky people were able to get their hands on it. Figure at least 500, maybe 1,000 people attended at the very least. And so there are at least that many copies. Maybe even more since, you know, somebody might have gotten two or three or what have you, okay? And they've gone up for sale recently. If you live in New York City, you might be able to get yourself a nice deal as you might be able to walk into a store. Someone had got their hands on it and you might be able to just pick it up that way. If not, you're going to be subject to the whim of a place like eBay or maybe one of a, maybe a chat room or some Facebook page where the guy has one and now you're going to have to spend some money on it. However, $810 for this book is excessive. See, too many times buyers chase after the hot book. You don't do this. Why? Because you end up spending a lot of money and it's rare that these type of numbers hold. Case in point, Muhammad Ali died earlier this year and once Muhammad Ali died, the book Superman versus Muhammad Ali, the price for that book started to skyrocket. All right? It was an old treasury edition type book, so it's large, it can't be graded. But it was going through the roof at this point. Copies were selling for three, four hundred dollars. But if you had paid attention earlier in the year, Prince, very well-known musician, had also died. Prince was also in a couple of comics. Those comics started to skyrocket. One was going for a hundred dollars. Before these books, you could have gotten these books for the cheapest price possible, maybe in as little as a dollar. Well, not the Muhammad Ali, but the Prince book. The Prince book was $100 for the spate of maybe four or five days, and then the price came crashing back down. So if you were one of the people who paid the peak price thinking, okay, this is a good book for me to invest in or to have, again, you followed the hot trend and you paid the price for it. If it's something that you were willing to pay for, $100, and you're satisfied with it, fine. Other than that, you've got $99 worth of buyer's remorse on your hands, and more than likely you're not going to be able to turn it over. Why? The only thing that would improve the value, besides grading of the book, would be a signature from Prince. And Prince, God rest his soul, is not going to be able to sign your book. Same thing, the Muhammad Ali versus Superman book. If you bought it at the premium price of three or four hundred dollars for that treasury book, even if it was a Whitman variant, okay, you paid much more than you should have paid. If you go and look for it now, it's maybe a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars, which is pretty much where the book has always been. The only way to increase the value on the book is to have a signature from either Neil Adams or Muhammad Ali. Neil Adams' signature would make the book about $200. Muhammad Ali's signature would make the book between four dollars and $500. You're not going to get Muhammad Ali's signature because, God rest his soul, he's no longer able to sign the book. 
but you spent the maximum amount of money on it. Now we come to Wonder Woman gold foil cover from the NYCC. Look, Wonder Woman is going to be hot, okay, now through up to maybe about two or three weeks before her movie. And a lot of guys want to get on that train. You should have gotten on that train a long time ago. But this is a good book to pick up if you can get it for the right range. And the best range is about 200 maybe $300 for the book. So at the very least, you can recoup your investment if you decide, well, look, I want to turn it over. Getting $300 for the book shouldn't be too much of a problem. You might lose a little, you might gain a little in profit, but you're not going to be exorbitantly you know, taken out. But $810? In order for your money to be worthwhile, you would have to, one, grade this book, two, have it signed, and then three, hope that you can get a turnaround of about $2,000 in order to make that $810 investment worthwhile. Now, if the book is in pristine condition, that's great. But again, few people spend $810 on a book to add it their, to their collection. If they're spending that much money, they're doing it because they're hoping that this book is going to go up in value. Very few books go up in value from $800. It's just the, the nature of capitalism and the nature of numbers. It's much easier to go from $1 to $2 than it is to go from $800 to $1,600 to actually make any profit on it. But hey, I can't tell you what to do with your money, and you're free to spend it as you so choose. But just look at the history of it. If you spend a large amount of money, say, on a book like Batman Adventures 12, 7, $800, Again, most people are not looking to put it into their collection, so they have now completed Batman Adventures, and now they have the missing number 12. No, you're looking to either grade it or to turn it over at some point in the future. You can't turn it over if the price is that high. What always really gets me is that I see these guys, and why are you spending so much money on this book? If you guys show just a little bit more self-control and restraint, the prices will actually stay reasonable. And a reasonable price for this book, I would say, is about $300. That's more than reasonable for a variant of this nature that's limited to about five, maybe 2,000 copies overall. Might even be a little bit, might even be more than that, but just from what we're seeing come out. But once you start jacking up the price to 800 look, the average guy can't afford to spend that much, but a seller is not going to look to go less on the book than that. And so you've spiked up the market with one book. One book! And now the prices are going to be exorbitant. They'll sit there. And then the average book is not necessarily going to be in the condition to give you any return. Let's say you did spend the $810, whoever you were. Now you've got this book. You go, you get it signed. Greg Rucka, somebody else as well. Make certain that you have your signatures witnessed. Because if you don't, you can't send them to CGC, which is the gold standard for grading. But you did all of that, you go to CGC. If the book doesn't come back a 9.8, it's a lot of wasted money because a 9.6 is not going to do it on this. In raw form, like we see over here, sure. But once you grade it, the money is locked in. You're not necessarily going to get anything higher for it. So let's say you got a 9.8. Maybe if you were really lucky and you got a 9.9. Fine. All of that hard work was worth it. If not, you've expended close to $1,000 on what? A gamble. And this is just not one of those books that's worth the gamble. A good Silver Age book? Yes. Okay, a good Bronze Age book, Luke Cage number one, sure. But this, no, absolutely not. The history isn't there and the value isn't there. It's just hot. And a lot of times we get caught chasing after the hot book because we have to have it. Or worse, you get caught up in internet auction fever. Somebody outbid you, you bid, you bid back. And before you know it, the price is so high and you're stuck with it. You don't want to be stuck with it. So, buying tip number one. Don't chase the hot book. Everything cools down after a while, even the hot book. Don't believe me? Ask all those guys who spent a lot of money on Black Lightning number one, and now they're looking at the book saying, I paid how much for this? Calvin Ellis, spin a rack. Buying tip number one to you. Don't, ch don't chase the hot book. See you next time.